I noticed that my palms were sweating as I grasped the doorknob. Nervously pulling the door open, I entered the surprisingly bright, modern, and lively establishment. I took another step and heard a chair to my left scrape across the tiled floor, almost like fingernails on a chalkboard, only much louder. I turned to look in that direction. I saw a flash and felt a very hot and heavy object smash into my chest. I backed up, but remained standing, trying to realize the situation I was in. I recognized Harold Blake's scowling face over the muzzle of the gun he held pointed at my chest. It was obvious from the size of the barrel that he was armed with something much larger than the .22 caliber I had expected to see. He was yelling at me, but I couldn't understand him because of the ringing in my ears. Although I couldn't understand him, I easily deciphered his intentions. It was obvious that he was completely out of his mind. He raised the gun a little higher and took a step towards me, a nasty smirk appearing on his face. Then it disappeared. Not just the smirk, but his whole face. Jesus, Dave, you've been shot, Les Williams remarked, hurrying over and gently lowering me into a comfortable chair. Les was the husband of my wife's cousin. He worked as a detective for the local police and wasn't a bad guy. I liked him even more now that Harold Blake was lying on the floor with his eyes open but not fixing anything. Les was a big guy and he really put a right cross into Blake's ugly face. Les started grabbing paper napkins and holding them to my chest, yelling at the bartender to call an ambulance. I felt very light. My ass started to slide off the wooden stool. The man who sat next to Les picked me up under my arms and gently lowered me to the floor. I heard Les say softly to the other man, that damn ambulance better get here soon or they'll take Dave straight to the morgue. Thanks for the support, was all I could say before I passed out. At some point, I started to come to my senses. I had no trouble recognizing the smells and sounds of the hospital. The drowsiness was hellish and my chest hurt like it never had before. I could hear voices, so I decided to keep my eyes closed for now and listen to what was being said. Mommy, who the hell is Harold Blake? My daughter Serena demanded an answer. I know he works for your company, but why did he shoot daddy? Did you or daddy have a problem with him? He's been bugging me since I went to a seminar in Las Vegas two weeks ago replied Shannon, my loving wife. I had no idea he was so unstable. That doesn't sound like much of an explanation, Serena replied. Why did he bother you after the trip? You told me you had a great time with Janice Long and the new girl from accounting. Why the hell did that miserable bastard shoot his father? There's a lot you're not telling me, isn't there? Are you having an affair with that asshole? Are you cheating on dad? Tell me you're not sleeping with that miserable bastard. Lying in bed and listening, I really hoped Serena was referring to Blake and not me. Still, I wouldn't have been surprised if Shannon had asked Serena exactly which freak she was talking about. Of course she wasn't, Shannon insisted. Blake happened to be at the seminar when Bill Lane's wife became so ill that Bill was unable to attend. Blake filled in for him. I didn't even know he was in Vegas until I got home. If you didn't know he was there, why did he start hitting on you? What did he want? He wanted me to sleep with him. He tried to blackmail me and I refused to go along with it, Shannon replied. Mom, your stupid answers are starting to annoy me. Everything you say to me begs new questions that I shouldn't have to pull the answers out of you. Dad's lying in a hospital bed after a .38 caliber bullet was removed from his chest. It barely missed his heart, but it hit his lung. He was shot by your coworker, who you now claim tried to blackmail you by demanding sex from you. But you don't provide answers to all the questions that seem perfectly obvious to me. Why, where, when, who, how, and what the hell? Mrs. Grant? My colleague and I would like to ask you a few questions about today's incident. Would you mind coming with us? A confident female voice asked. We need to get your statement to get to the bottom of this shooting. I hope the police have better luck than I did, Serena muttered to herself as she heard the sound of the door closing. Dad. Please tell me you're going to be okay. Mom and I would be lost without you. I cautiously opened one eye and saw Serena sitting alone, face buried in her hands. She seemed to be trying to hold back tears. I'll get better as soon as I can, I mumbled, much to Serena's surprise and relief. Dad, you're awake. We've been told you're out of danger and you're going to be fine. Mom and I are allowed to sit by your bedside and wait for the anesthesia to wear off. I promised to let the nurse know as soon as you woke up. With those words, Serena jumped up and left the room, 
only to return a minute or so later. Behind her was a middle-aged nurse with a smile. She gave me some ice water to suck on through a tube and herself quickly examined me for any obvious problems. I'll tell the doctor you're awake and talking, Mr. Grant. It's good to see you're feeling better. You'll be going home soon. With those words, she left the room. Can you remember what happened? Serena asked. Are you in a lot of pain? Some bastard shot me. I'm in a hell of a lot of pain, I answered. My question to you is, why did that bastard try to kill me? Nobody knows, Dad. The police are investigating the case. They're talking to Mom right now, Serena stated. Did you ever have a problem with Harold Blake? Harold Blake? I repeated. I saw him once at your mom's work event. I don't think I ever spoke to him. Did he shoot me? He shot you in the chest with a .38 caliber pistol. The bullet missed your heart, but grazed your lung. He was about to fire a second shot, but luckily Les Williams was sitting at the bar. He knocked Blake out before he could pull the trigger again. You're lucky Les was there. Yeah, I was damn lucky, I agreed sarcastically. Was your mom upset when she found out I'd been shot? Are you kidding? She was pretty upset. I had to drive her here and she cried the whole way, Serena replied. Why are you asking me that? You know mom loves you. Maybe there's something going on that I don't know about. There seems to be a lot going on that none of us know about, I replied. The obvious question is this. Why did this asshole try to kill me? The second and almost equally important question is also obvious. Did your mother have anything to do with why this asshole shot me? She insisted that he was trying to blackmail her into having sex with him, Serena stated. She didn't mention the fact that he had power over her to make him think that she would give in to him. I don't need to tell you that if your mother cheated on me, I would leave her so fast it would make her dizzy. I've been faithful our entire marriage, and I won't tolerate your mother walking on the side. You've never hidden your feelings about fidelity, Dad. Mom knows how you feel, and I don't think she would ever cheat on you. You know how beautiful Mom still looks. She'd never be with a freak like Harold Blake if she ever decided to do anything weird. If you're trying to cheer me up, you're not very good at it, I replied. Your mom may be a MILF, but that doesn't mean she can cheat on me if she finds a particularly great guy. Marriage doesn't work that way. Serena quickly realized her gaffe and tried to correct herself. I didn't mean she'd cheat on you with anyone. I just said that if she did, it would only be with someone much better than Harold Blake. That's all I meant. Just stop burying yourself even deeper, Serena, I insisted. Dave, you're awake, Shannon screamed from the doorway. I was so worried about you. And why would you be so worried about me, I asked. It's just that one of your co-workers shot me with a .38 caliber pistol. There was nothing wrong with that, of course, depending on the reason he was trying to kill me. Shannon was shocked by my words. She stopped moving toward my bed and started sobbing. He shot you because I told him you would kick his ass if he kept bothering me. He has some videotapes of me dot 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 in compromising poses. He thought I'd rather sleep with him than let him show you those videos. Then I foolishly threatened him with a serious beating from you, Dave. I didn't realize how unstable he was. He told me if you came after him, he'd shoot you, Shannon said. He said he had a permit to carry a gun and would use it if you looked at him funny. Did he tell you he had a .38 caliber? That's a damn powerful weapon, especially within 10 feet, I explained sharply. First, he said he had a .22 Ruger. I laughed at him. I told him you'd shove that gun up his ass if he ever came at you, Shannon admitted. Apparently, he bought a .38 as soon as the waiting period ended. Let's see if I got this right. This crazy bastard tells you that he will shoot me with his .22 caliber if I come near him for any reason. This prompts you to tell him that his gun is too ineffective to shoot me, so he takes your advice seriously and gets a bigger gun. Why did you threaten him without telling me? Why did you advise him to buy a bigger gun? I growled. The cops just asked me the same thing, Shannon admitted. I was trying to talk him out of hurting you. I thought that by telling him how big and strong you were, he'd back off. I didn't expect him to buy a bigger gun. You know I would never intentionally provoke someone to shoot you. And yet that's exactly what you did, Mom, Serena interjected. You still haven't told us what kind of incriminating videotapes he had in his hands or how he got them. What the hell did you do, Mom? The new girl who traveled with us to the seminar was younger and much more free-spirited than Janice and I. 
It was very hot in Vegas, and she had friends who were members of a private club. She kept asking us to go to the club with her. One of the perks was the use of the beautiful Olympic-sized pool. I'm not going to ask any more questions, Mom, Serena stated. Obviously, there was more to the story. It was a private club where members and guests went naked, or at least topless. I'm ashamed to admit it, but Janice and I agreed to go there after our seminar was over. We were very nervous at first, but after a half hour or so, we felt that being topless in front of other people was natural. I didn't know it, but Harold Blake had a friend in the club. There were rules against photography and videotaping, but he clearly broke them. He was sneaking topless pictures of me and Janice. When we got back from Vegas, he emailed me copies and said he would send them to Dave, Mom, Dad, and anyone else whose addresses he could get. Janice said he did the same thing to her. He wrote the letter so it looked like we had sex several times in Vegas. He just wanted it to happen again. It kept me from showing it to you, Dave. I was afraid you'd think it was true. It's not. I would never cheat on you. I was shocked by Shannon's explanation of the events in Vegas that led to me getting shot. How could I have been so naive? Sweat began to drip from my forehead. I'm going to have to ask you both to leave, the tall stranger announced as he entered the room. I let you sit with your husband and father, thinking he would wake up in a friendly atmosphere. I did not expect him to be under such strain as he is now. If his recovery goes as I feel it will, you should be able to take him home in a day or two. Lucky the bullet took the trajectory it did. Of course, Dr. Raines, Serena replied, standing up and guiding her mother towards the door. The guy who was apparently a doctor examined my wound, but I fell asleep before he finished his examination. When I next woke up, there was a policeman and a man in plain clothes in the room. The policeman nodded when he saw me open my eyes. Mr. Bell, I'm Officer Hastings, and this is Detective Allen. We'd like to ask you a few questions about the events that led to you needing surgery. Are you feeling well enough to talk to us? We'll try to be brief. I don't really know much, but I'll answer your questions as best I can, I replied. Maybe it would be quicker if you just tell us what happened, Detective Allen suggested. I told everything I remembered from the moment I opened the door to the pub to the moment I woke up in the hospital bed. Did you have any contact with Harold Blake before he shot you? The detective asked. When I shook my head, he asked, Did you read the emails he sent to your wife? She told us you were not computer savvy and didn't even know the password. This detective was making it easy for me by throwing me softballs. Shannon's right. I am not computer savvy, and she never told me any of her passwords. Did he email her something that indicated he was going to shoot me? I really can't discuss what we've learned so far. We're just trying to put all the pieces of the puzzle together, Alan replied, then asked a few more questions about my interactions with Blake. I told him that I had seen him once at one of Shannon's company events and had never spoken to him. Shannon, as I recall, never mentioned his name. They looked satisfied and soon left me alone with my thoughts. I really messed up. It was obvious. Shannon said she'd never slept with the bastard, and I believed her. She rarely lied, especially about anything serious, and she had signs that let me know if she was twisting the truth. She didn't show them when she explained to Serena and me that Blake wanted to pull a piece of her ass off. I had to take the time to read all the new emails she'd gotten from that prick before I went to his favorite beer joint, expecting the asshole to pounce on me with a .22 caliber pistol. A person can die from a shot from such a weapon, but the bullet would have to be very aptly aimed. I had already decided that Blake wasn't going to be surgically precise and aimed when he formulated his contrived revenge. Shannon was my whole life. After 20 years of marriage, I loved her more than I'd ever imagined. When she came back from her trip to Vegas, she acted a little strange. It wasn't any one thing, but a combination of little things. I began to worry. Over the years, I had learned to keep various little things from Shannon. The most important one was the fact that I wasn't as dumb with computers as she thought I was. I knew my way around a laptop. I used it at work, even though she had somehow never considered the possibility. I had seen her check her email years ago and had memorized her password which was the date of our anniversary. She had no clue about anything. Since her unusual behavior bothered me, I decided to log into her account for the first time. I soon discovered that Harold Blake had sent Shannon copies of several videos of her topless in a pool surrounded by several other people. To say this surprised me is a massive understatement. Another thing that surprised me was Janice Long's surprisingly large and firm breasts. Who would have thought it? 
I was far less worried about Shannon going topless in Las Vegas than I was about her sleeping with Blake. From the way he phrased his letters, it appeared that Shannon had slept with him multiple times. Her responses included threats about what I would do to him if he didn't stop trying to blackmail her. Looking back at those emails, you have to admit that she never admitted to having sex with him. She never even broached the subject. I'd been following Blake for most of the previous week. He always stopped at the same pub on his way home. In my defense, I was very depressed that I thought Shannon was cheating on me. I read in the emails that he had a concealed carry permit for a firearm. It was a .22 caliber handgun, and he would use it if I tried to deal with him in any way. I never saw the emails about getting a bigger gun. My plan for revenge was very simple. Too simple, as it turned out. I would casually walk into the pub when he would be there. I would stare at him until he became agitated and pointed his gun at me. If necessary, I would pretend to pull my gun out of my pocket to get him to react. If he was just waving his gun around and threatening me, I would arrest him and get him the maximum sentence. If it looked like he was going to shoot me, I planned to cover my face with my hands and bend over so that less of my torso would be exposed to small bullets. In retrospect, I realized that my assumptions were quite wrong. The guy did indeed have a .38 caliber. He didn't wave the gun around or threaten me. He just shot me in the chest before I had any chance to take cover. I knew I could have died from a .22 caliber shot, but that seemed unlikely. A .38 caliber shot, on the other hand, there's no doubt about it. The biggest reason I decided that the threat of Shannon's lover or the possibility of being shot by him was a great idea was how it would affect Shannon. Her cheating would be the cause of my pain and possibly my demise. I knew she still loved me in her own way, even if she had been unfaithful. Being responsible for my hospitalization or death would devastate her. I was sure of it. The truth about her infidelity would come out during the investigation. And I would end up as the poor, innocent husband who mistakenly confided in his whore wife. The topless videos would somehow fall into the wrong hands and be shown to Shannon's friends and family. She might have even been ostracized by her family, which would have hurt her deeply. Shannon had a great relationship with her parents, siblings, and even my family. Family was a very important part of her life. Now I had to think about how I was going to get out of this mess that I had created myself. I had to make sure Shannon didn't find out what an idiot I was, how I believed she was having an affair with Blake, and how I'd come up with my half-dead plan just to make her and her lover suffer, even if I died in the process. I always thought I had a knack for solving problems, but recent events have made me reconsider. How could I avoid being made out to be the dumbest asshole in the world? How could I properly present the situation when the shit hit the fan? Shannon and Serena visited me in the afternoon. Serena was excited about letting me go home the next day. Shannon was withdrawn and silent. It looked like my poorly thought out plan had worked. She was depressed and with tears in her eyes. I pretended to fall asleep and they cut their visit short. When they left, I started thinking about how I could fix the situation. I wasn't really surprised that Shannon had gone topless to a private club in Vegas for a couple reasons. One reason was that she was in great shape kept her good-sized, firm breasts, and was understandably proud of her appearance. Another reason was the pressure from her friend Janice, who also had an impressive breast size. Judging from the videos I watched a few dozen times, Janice was eager to have her natural wonders appreciated by her fans. The biggest reason I wasn't surprised was a conversation I overheard one day coming home from work early one hot Saturday morning. Shannon and Serena were sitting by the pool. Apparently, they were having an impromptu pool party. Serena's two closest friends, Beth and Amber, were there in little bikinis, as was Shannon's younger sister, Laura. A couple of neighbors were also there, both women in their mid-thirties. I decided to eavesdrop on the conversation before grabbing a small cooler of beer and chatting with the women. The topic of conversation turned out to be very interesting. They were discussing how they would like to go somewhere far away to a beach where they could go topless without being discovered by family, friends, and the people they work with. Serena and her two adorable friends talked the most about how much fun it would be and that it was an experience they would never forget. I was very surprised when Shannon and Laura agreed with them and started talking about how interesting it would be to behave very differently from the usual boring suburban housewives. That conversation, which I overheard at the pool that day, still echoed in my head long after I fell asleep. Apparently, Shannon was a bit of an exhibitionist, 
It made me wonder if all women are like that, or if it's only characteristic of women who are beautifully shaped, confident, and have the ability to fulfill those desires. Serena and Shannon picked me up from the hospital to take me home. I was given a list of prescriptions and prescriptions to follow. I was given diet and exercise instructions for the near future and promised to see my family doctor regularly. Shannon helped me into the house where I was surprised to see most of our close friends and family. Everyone expressed their concern and wished me a speedy recovery. I shook hands and said hello to people until my strength began to wane. At that point, I sank into my favorite chair to rest, reluctantly, but I fell asleep. Upon waking up, I briefly listened to the conversation and what I heard triggered my anger. Shannon was essentially being attacked by her and my family for her bad behavior in Las Vegas. It was clear from the conversation that the videotapes did get into the hands of most of our guests. Married women don't walk around with their breasts exposed, especially in an unfamiliar place, her father admonished Shannon. You might as well get a tattoo on your forehead or your ass or both saying you're available. That's just asking for trouble. You got Dave shot. Jack's right, my father said as soon as Shannon's father stopped talking. Decent women don't flaunt their breasts to anyone who wants to see them. My granddaughter needs a good role model. Having her mother on video showing herself topless in front of a bunch of strangers is the wrong message. I'm very disappointed in you. Shannon just stood there, taking it all in. Tears were streaming down her cheeks. She was trembling slightly. This was her reaction when she was upset and stressed to the max. It broke my heart to see and hear my wife being treated like an outcast. But what pissed me off the most was that it was our own family that was treating Shannon so cruelly. Everyone here needs to shut up or get the hell out, I growled, getting to my feet and walking over to Shannon. Jack, who owns this house you're standing in right now? I demanded an answer from my father-in-law. Well, it's your house, Dave, Jack replied, not trying to hide his confusion. Wrong answer, asshole, I roared. This house belongs to your daughter, who happens to be my wife and me. You are now in Shannon's fucking house and calling her things that are completely unacceptable. You have a couple of options. You can get out of our house and keep your head down. You can try your luck at treating me like shit, or you can apologize to Shannon. I was just pointing out that her actions, Jack began. You're on thin ice, Jack. Preaching is not an option. Get the hell out now or apologize to your daughter. Son, he's just... My father tried to intervene. You're next, Dad, I warned. No one in our house says nasty things to or about my wife. What are you gonna do, Jack? I was wrong, Shannon. Your husband loves you and he's right. This is your home and I have to respect you and consider you. If I can't give you that, I shouldn't be here. I apologize. Shannon rushed to her father and hugged him, while her mother, Susan, hugged me tightly. That's how a man protects his wife. You are a good man. The groan I involuntarily let out as Susan pressed her chest against my wound caught everyone's attention. Grandma, I think your breasts were putting undue pressure on Daddy's chest, Serena remarked. Those girls have turned more than one man into jelly, Susan muttered as the laughter was replaced by tension in the atmosphere. Shannon, I want to apologize before Dave throws me out. I overreacted. You made my son happy and gave us a beautiful granddaughter, my father stated. Everyone seems to be under the mistaken impression that I'm upset that Shannon let her hair down, as well as her Vegas top. In fact, you would never have known about it if it wasn't for that creep, Harold Blake. I had an epiphany when both fathers were pouncing on Shannon since I really loved her and understood her a little better than I did a few weeks ago. I was going to make lemonade out of lemons. Shannon has a beautiful figure. I challenge anyone who has seen videos of her topless to dispute that statement. She and I are proud of her figure. I think most attractive women like Shannon are prone to exhibitionism. Obviously, Shannon has it. When she told me she was going to Las Vegas, I advised her to visit that club where she could go topless and no one would know about it. It turns me on that men enjoy looking at my wife, as long as I'm the only man who enjoys these delights up close, personal, and direct. If you want to criticize someone for Shannon having a good time in Vegas, try doing it with me. We decide things together and go by what makes us happy, not random friends and family. Shannon looked at me in shock as I said this. Serena smiled widely and looked at her mom. Both women exchanged nods. 
Their silent communication skills were well known in our family. Everyone else was still trying to digest my little revelation. They looked at me in surprise, amusement, and approval. Since the cat is out of the bag, you may know that Shannon and I are going on a two-week vacation in August. We're going to the island of Kokomo. The island is well known for its beaches, many of which require no clothing. We won't have any tan lines when we get back, I stated. If any of you have a problem with our life choices, express it now. Tell us why we are sick puppies and need help. I think that's a great idea, Dad. Mommy will be very pleased to have her breasts free and horny men staring at her, and you'll be there for protection, Serena predicted. Thank you, Serena. It means a lot when our daughter understands and encourages our bacchanalia. I can't wait, Serena added. You promised I could go on our next family vacation. You also told Beth and Amber that they could come with us if they paid for their airfare. We'll have a great time. I was about to voice my opinion about Serena going to the beach topless. I immediately realized that I would react like Jack if I voiced my concerns about my 19-year-old daughter going to the beach topless. I'd be the biggest hypocrite in the world if I offered anything but support, Serena, I decided, thinking about the fact that I'd have to talk to her alone later. I was torn between my options. Beth and Amber topless was a vision I wanted to experience. However, Serena walking around with her breasts uncovered bothered me. I thought about telling her that this trip was supposed to be a romantic getaway for Shannon and me. What I heard next made me glad I hadn't voiced that thought yet. Sis, would you mind if I went with you? Shannon's divorced and very well-built sister Laura asked.